So, I just got back, had a lot to eat, had a lot to drink as well, and I did not watch a single second of the Vancouver Canucks and the St. Louis Blues game. Just kidding, I saw when Pia Sutar ended up tying the game in the third period. That's all I watched live on my smartphone. I told y'all I was at a buddy's house, we were having a good time, and... I was kind of thinking, okay, I'm going to bring my laptop on board, going to bring my phone too, just in case I need to record a vlog, just in case something big, extraordinary happens. And then when I got the notification on my phone that, oh, the Canucks lost in overtime, because, spoiler alert, I was only free for a small amount of time, that's how I ended up watching the PS Sutar game tying goal. When I saw that the Canucks lost, I was like, ah, shucks, they lost. Okay, um, I'm not really feeling the vibe to take a step away from the party and just, you know, do whatever it is to record a video, so I'm just gonna wait and get home, and then I will talk. And now I am back home. I still have not watched most of the highlights. I saw the Pia Sutar hat trick because, hey, I mean, they're posting all the goals all over Instagram, but what I also saw was the game-winning goal. Oh my goodness, Elias Pettersson gets himself taken down in front of the Canucks net with a cross-check by Braden Shen. Petey honestly kind of went down a little easy, I'm not going to lie, but he gets up, he's a little slow to get up, he's looking at the referee the entire time he does, and then by the time he's on his feet, looking back to where the puck is, it's on the stick of Braden Shen, it's off the stick of Braden Shen, he beats Casey to Smith at the hash marks, and the Canucks lose 4-3. to three. Now, I'll say this, heading into tonight's game, I was kind of already, I don't want to say worried, is that the right word? I don't know. Because when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks, they played the St. Louis Blues at the start of their seven-game road trip and lost. That 2 nothing or 2-1, or I think it was 2-1, that loss was a really tight game. But it was one of these games where the Vancouver Canucks actually probably were the better team. It's just they kind of got goalied, and they really weren't able to bring the best out of themselves to force results their way. Tonight's game, based off the money puck deserved to win a meter, you could probably conclude the same thing. The Canucks had a 68% chance of winning this game based off of the expected goals and the opportunities within, especially in that third period before Pia Sutar ended up getting the game tying goal. Z. And I say goals because he got three in the third period. What an absolute stud of a human being. First game with the chrome buckets, by the way. Get rid of them, they're cursed. But Vancouver ends up losing this one in overtime to a play that a lot of Canucks fans are going to be ticked off about. Oh, Petey got cross-checked, Petey got this, Petey got that, whatever, whatever. But another interesting aspect about this game in particular was the Elias Pettersson performance. To open up this entire video, we're going to talk about what Rick Tockett said in regards to Petey. He says this, I haven't liked Pettersson's game in the last three to four games. We need him to get going. He needs to skate. And this comment, which I absolutely love, by the way, like not to say that I love seeing Rick Tockett rip on Elias Pettersson, but I love seeing Rick Tockett be a similar level of accountable to his players in the locker room and in the public eye. You know coaches have their moments with players. They'll call out guys in the room, they'll point out who's doing all right, they'll point out what things need to be improved upon for other players. But a comment like this, where Rick Tockett is straight up saying that the de facto best player on the team, quote-unquote, has just not been good the past few games. And this comment speaks volumes to how much expectation there is on Elias Pettersson, how we need him to get going, he needs to skate, that, hey, we know he can be better than this. But this game in particular was one where Canucks fans will be clamoring in regards to his overall performance. Now again, I didn't watch this game, so all these comments are just going to be from the subreddit, they're going to be what other Canucks fans have to say in regards to Tockett and Pedersen. I like how Tock is being honest with the players, even to the media. You know Petey will take this on board. He's the biggest critic, you know it. The guy just wants to win. Watch him for a hattie against the Columbus Blue Jackets. No lie detected, Rick Tockett. I hate to rag on Elias Pettersson because when he's on, you know how good he can be. But if he seriously wants to be paid top of the league money, he can't keep having these stretches where he's making no impact on the ice. Top guys don't do that with the regularity that Pettersson has throughout his career so far. 
It's fine when you make six or seven million, decidedly less so when you're over 10 and one of the highest paid players in the league. His last contract messed him up for half a season. I hate to think what his next one will do to his psyche unless he can figure his stuff out. Consistency is what separates Pedersen from guys like McKinnon, Kucherov, Matthews. I'm afraid he won't take less than what Nylander got, whom I think the Leafs overpaid. And this is an interesting aspect, because if Rick Tockett is calling out Pedersen's game for the past three to four games and not just from today, I honestly feel like that is a pretty fair critique. As somebody who does own Elias Pedersen in fantasy, so I'm keeping track of pretty much every intricate thing that he does on the ice, even though there are the games where he goes out there and gets himself a goal, gets himself a power play goal, goal and an assist, 4.9, some of these games as of late have been not the best for EP. It's kind of shades of what we had seen at different parts of last season, where the Bruce Boudreaux thing was going on, where he got fired and some of these other guys were slumping a little bit. Pedersen is kind of going through a similar process like that today. And I know that when I said that Elias Pedersen has all the leverage in the world, we had talked about that Cam Robinson tweet, where he pretty much says, yeah, Pedersen's going to get a 100-point year again, which I don't think is too unbelievable of an idea. He's probably going to get 100 points. If he goes out there and gets that, he'll have contract negotiations coming off of two straight 100-point seasons back-to-back. -back. That has not been done before in the NHL's current status of players and everything. All the guys who had signed big money extensions have come after only, at the very most, one 100-point year. Pedersen getting two before this contract negotiation starts out in the summer gives him leverage like we have not seen before. But it's games like these, it's stretches like these, where Elias Pettersson, with his giveaways in overtime, his maybe soft ways of getting down, and all of his opportunities that he flubs that, in a way, may hold him back from being one of the absolute peak guys in the NHL in terms of money. Sure, he's only 24. Sure, he's going to be in his prime for the next few years. Sure, he is an RFA, so the Vancouver Canucks, even if they do find a way to lose him, like, they'll get stuff in return. But of course, we know that's not the case. Like, they don't want to lose him. Canucks fans don't want to lose him. The management knows they don't want to lose him. It just becomes an issue when you think, oh yeah, this guy's probably going to make, like, $12 million AAV in his next contract. You know? Nathan McKinnon making 12.6 mil a year. That's cool. The guy had a four goal night today. Four goals, one assist. He's always on. He's one of the best players in the league, if not second best behind Connor McDavid. Nikita Kucherov is up in there too. Like, of course, McDavid, dry saddle, everybody else. But Elias Pettersson has not really developed the consistency game by game every single week to justify being included in that conversation right now. Like, you could say in terms of peak talent, like, you take all these guys on their best nights, Pedersen's right up in there. If McDavid and Matthews and McKinnon are like 1A, Pedersen's like a 1B. But how often do we get the best version of Pedersen? Not as often as we get the best of McDavid or the best of McKinnon. Even for McDavid, he slumped at the beginning of the year. Guess what? That guy has clawed and forced his way back into the scoring race. He is now one of the top guys in points after having a season where he was a normal point-per-game guy. Here's another comment of the Canucks sub. Pedersen is like Bambi on skates. I think he could still put on a bit of size and maybe work into skating. It's crazy how someone as good as him looks like he's about to fall over all the time. And sure, if you wanted to talk about contract comparisons, William Nylander has not particularly been fantastic, oddly enough, ever since he had signed his contract extension. But, I don't know, the guy's on pace for 110 points this year, he's been better than Pedersen so far, so like, I don't know, where do you go with this? You know, I didn't even talk about the game today. Not even talking about the game, that's fine, I didn't watch most of it anyway, but Pia Suttar had himself the hat trick, so hats off to him. Good on Quinn Hughes for getting the multiple assists, he is doing the things that Alex Edler has done, except in so many fewer games. And then you have yourselves the loss in overtime, which of course stings a little bit. St. Louis, I know y'all may be coming into this video and trying to, I don't know, maybe troll a little bit? Who really knows? I'm not too sure if that's going to be the case here, but still. Revel in your victory. Just beat one of the best teams in the NHL, but at least the Canucks got themselves a point. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Pedersen conversation, and whether or not I'm being too harsh on the guy. Maybe it's because I had a few drinks. Maybe I just did not watch the game and I am dumb. Both things can be true at the same time. But either way, thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.